Yo, okay, as per the usual, I'll try to keep it short and sweet and to the point. First up, I've got news about Half-Life in VR, and then I've got an update on Microsoft's Project xCloud, their Xbox game streaming service, which plays anywhere at some point. And then, even more news about the PlayStation 5 and its VR capabilities. And finally, VR Fitness Insider was willing to give us a Beat Saber playlist that is designed specifically for fitness and energizing and all that kind of I'm not sure how many of you guys have been looking forward to Half-Life episodes. However, the mind behind the Valve News Network, Tyler McVicker, may have found the first notes that may indicate something like that is in the works. A Half-Life VR game. This one in particular supposedly set during the 20 years between Half-Life 1 and 2. And they notice this by doing a little bit of digging. As a part of this digging, he noticed that there are many, many particular assets that mention VR, LVR, or a gravity gun. And the gravity gun itself would end up referencing a mechanic that is typically seen in VR games where you would be able to grab things from really, really far away without actually being able to touch it. However, that window in itself really a ton to go on. However, the simple fact that Valve itself confirmed development on a, on three full VR games that were expected to launch some point this year and possibly even next year could indicate that this may in fact be one of those games. Uh, all of that information in itself can be found in the description down below along with um, citing at the moment. So I did promise that I would talk about Project X Cloud, Microsoft's answer to Google Stadia and PlayStation Now. Right now, the system itself is in beta, and there are a few caveats to it. As it stands, there are four games you can play as part of that beta. Five. Hello 5, for Instinct, and, and on top of that, at the moment, the server side itself is Xbox One S hardware, as opposed to launches affect Project Scarlet hardware. That being said, it's going to require a fairly strong internet connection to access this. The writer of the article I'm quoting today required a one gigabit with a 10 millisecond latency. While that in itself doesn't really bad, while performing best on Halo 5, a game that is, well, considered a first person, obviously, but really seem to have much problem with that. All that being said, it requires requires a single profile be attached to it. Your physical system is logged in and profile is logged in. Not only is it require that profile itself be logged out, but um well the the system is questionable. On top of that, the uh, main issue that doesn't seem to play well with 4 gigabyte or gigahertz network, but rather the 5 gigahertz one most uh, most applicable to Wi Fi 5 and 6. So hopefully you're able to have a decent connection. When you try it out for yourself. Once again, you can find that download link in the description down below to try for yourself. It has been confirmed that the 
PlayStation 5 is going to carry a 4K Blu-ray drive. So even though we are heading into push towards streaming games, music, movies, everything, Sony still recognizes that there are plenty of people who prefer physical copies of whatever it is they want to enjoy. Music, movies, or games. And on top of that, we have seen a recent tech demo that give us precisely what the vibe can do. I'll try to read it off for you as best as I can, quoting it word for word. The demo I saw had the real-time graphics I've ever seen. What I mean by that, it looked like a real game you can play, not some polished UE4 or Unity technical demo you would see. There's no mistaking this for a, a current generation on P or console. So, lighting, environment dynamics, Red Dead Redemption 2, that's too awesome. is there. Yeah, but like a Shadowfall moment to me. That it seems totally different from what I've used. Now granted, frame rate was maybe 25 to 30 ish. Early, early, early. I actually out loud WTF when I saw this. One thing I found really interesting was the quality of the shadows. I especially noticed there were approximately but high bushes. They were swaying in the wind, they were being shadows with perfect tail, no shimmer or stair stepping at all. I'm talking about a bush with maybe 75 to 100 branches on it and hundreds of leaves casting perfect shadows. Keep in mind, random whatever the bush. Also, the overall picture quality was astoundingly solid, like it used some super AA quality. The game is full 2160, but again, has no shimmering whatsoever. It has a really solid resolve to the graphics. It's running on Navi based hardware, so current for the PS5 development kit. So, obviously, we can expect some really good quality out of this upcoming console when it launches next year. Just 13 months left, and we can all see our very own. Nicely, what the upcoming systems are capable. Yet another feature we can expect out of the upcoming controller and console is that the controller itself would be able to connect to the internet and provide a cloud gaming service similar to what we can expect out of the Google Stadia controller when that launches next month. If there is anything we can expect, it is that. This feature in itself is going to raise the price in the event that it does in fact launch. Because this is yet another feature that, well, it, honestly, it's going to raise the price quite a bit. Because we've already seen PlayStation Assist, that uh, there's added microphone, they're going to keep the touchpad. Uh, it, they're changing a lot about the controller and adding a ton of features. Right now, the lowest price that you're going to be able to find a controller on Amazon for a DualShock 4 is going to be $40. For the growing list of features that you can expect out of a DualShock 5, this thing is not going to be. It's likely going to run you more than a typical game would. But because of the growing list of features, growing amount of utility you can expect, it's going to be worth every penny. And expecting the console itself to come in at $500, dude, I, I just don't even know what to say anymore. It, it's just, it just sounds amazing. $500 for the launch system with a controller like that and features and processing power like that sounds amazing. I do have one last thing to talk about as a part of my Sony rant. That is that we have our first glimpse of what upcoming PlayStation or version 2 that may look like. That is this headset right here. I say that because this is at a location event in Tokyo for a multiplayer augmented reality system. While 
This one in particular is for to be an R and D prototype intended to six degree tracking and experience. Obviously, this pass through technology in order to be able to capture the scenery around the headset, as well as what the player themselves is doing. That being this augmented reality headset that Sony has given us, or shown us, rather, could very easily be tethered to a Although it is in originally intended standalone system, like I said, it could be tethered to one, allowing us a virtual reality that's controlled by our eyes when that thing actually launches, eventually. So that said, this headset in itself likely going to be what we look at when the system launches next year. But the, as I've said many times, so headset itself is likely not going to launch until as the system five is intended to launch around holiday next year. So that all that being said, this location based augmented reality that they have right now is going to make an excellent one and one that I hope to see both up very soon. This last part is really simple. VR Fitness Insider, a website that specializes in the cross section between fitness and virtual reality, has gone forward to work with modders, appers, and players to create a specialized playlist that is targeted specifically for those that want to get a better workout when playing Beat Saber. You can find that playlist in the description down below as well as all the relevant links. If you guys are still here and you're feeling charitable in some way, you can activate that charity in a few different ways. The first one, you can go to HumbleBundle.com and pick out one of the bundles that they have for sale there. When you get one of these bundles, you're not, you're not only able to get some good software or books or games or what, whatever it is that you're you're choosing but you're also able to support a charity of your choice they have a few different ones available so you don't have to feel necessarily tied down to helping children or animals the, even though well animals are always a good one aren't they and then if that is up your speed I'm selling these headphones on Amazon link on screen I personally use them I really like them and they've been working out really well for me if that still doesn't really work out well for you I've got a link on screen also for my patreon well up here somewhere I, I don't know where I'll put it but you'll find it somewhere I hope probably maybe uh, I think this is a good place to end the video if you guys liked it let me know if you hated it let me know and as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.